Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with the Great War. This time on to week 4, a new war with old generals, Carnage, on the Western Front. Pretty much the, one of the big issues of the Great War is that these generals were old, no. Old in the sense that, uh, some of them probably were not that old. I don't know the ages of the generals, I'm just gonna assume here. Some obviously weren't that old, but their, their mindset, uh, is at least when talking about old generals but typically what that means um is that they just got this old mindset to them the old way of fighting um but yes uh carnage on the western front so we're going to be talking about the bloody battles that happened in the fourth week of the great war um before we dive in make sure you check out the links below in the description box or in my pinned comment the comment section got a link to my gaming channel here on YouTube and a link to my Twitch channel. Would love it if you threw me a follow. Now, uh, what I'm going to do for this series is I'm not going to react to it four times a week. Or four times, yeah, because that would then be a Great War video every other day. And in my opinion, I feel like I, I don't, I don't want my channel to be, because this would still take a long time if I did that. That would be still like a year of videos to go through. So then it would essentially, looking at my channel, people would be like, oh, this guy just, it would just look like I'm only watching Great War video. It's kind of what it would look like. And I don't want that. So... Instead, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to increase it from one a week to going to be two a week. So it's going to be, when you see a Great War video, you can then uh, expect the next one to happen in four days. So let's say this gets uploaded on a Monday. I actually don't know when I'm uploading. It gets uploaded on a Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are going to be different videos. Next Great War video would be on a Friday. And then four days again, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Great War video. That's how it's going to go. Um, I think that'll speed things along and not make it four years to get through all this content. It'll still take some time. However, I feel like that's a good balance uh, to go through this. Um, and that is, of course, still assuming that I continue to do reactions even that far into the future. We will see. Um, now that that's all out of the way, let's just go ahead and dive into the video. Many of the generals of World War I were almost completely Many of the generals of World War I were almost completely out of touch with the lethal technology of the 20th century. In August Sounds like boomers. 1914, this became very apparent. It remained a problem throughout the war, though, and led to the catastrophic loss of millions of young men's lives. What's interesting about the Great War is, is what he said there in the beginning is that because of the way in which they fought this war, the old mindset is what caused millions of deaths, right? However, then we look at World War II, where it is a very modernized war with modern tactics. It's not old generals anymore. There are various ideas being put into, into testing that are being used throughout the war. And it still becomes the deadliest war in history because the scope of World War II is on a whole nother level compared to like when you compare World War One to World War Two, it almost feels a bit, I guess, unfair to World War One to can to give it the same name as World War Two, just because of the sheer difference in scale of where the fighting went and the amount of death that occurred to also the villain. Um. Just, just a random thought ahead. But then, of course, you know, many people consider really World, World War II to be a continuation of World War I. So really, you could say there was just a break in, de in between the fighting and really just one overarching war. Which, you know, I can see argument for that. I could, I could agree with that depending on how you want to argue it. But, uh, yeah. My name is Indy Nidell. Welcome to the Great War. At the beginning of the week, the Austrians were slowly invading Serbia. The Germans were nearing Warsaw and besieging the fortresses of Belgium. The French had mounted their first offensives before retreating, and the English... France? Really? 
I'm, I've tried my best to get rid of the uh, whole French retreating slash surrendering joke throughout this channel. And then you go and do this in World War I in the first four weeks. Come on. We're transporting over 100,000 troops to mainland Europe. What we'll see is that when modern artillery, machine guns, and trains that could quickly move millions of troops around the continent met field tactics from a century earlier, this week would spiral into some of the bloodiest carnage of the entire war. The French had a battle Love plan, this footage Plan 17, this which very basically involved a defensive concentration of forces along the border with Germany, with counter-strikes into Germany. Is, is the host here, was he a teacher? He feels like he was... He, he used it. He, he, it just feels like he's a natural teacher. Just the way he's moving and then gesturing to like that, like he'd be, he'd be a teacher you'd want. He's one of those kind of... Or possibly Belgium. The French army still thought it was the 1800s and they went to war in brightly colored uniforms with officers waving sabers in the front mounted on chargers and marching bands playing music and the standard form of attack was masses of men advancing the way they had for centuries in the open. Oh, God. Colonel Serrett. You know, it's crazy. You always hear that talked about how, you know, people still did the marching orders and whatnot of the 1800s here in the war. But you never see footage of that. I've never seen footage of them actually doing it. So that's really cool. <laughs> the French pre-war military attaché to Berlin had repeatedly told France of the benefits of drab uniforms to help defend against modern artillery now that war could be conducted at a distance. But he was ignored. Hmm. His words proved prophetic on August 20th, though, as the French army, in their bright colors, were slaughtered at Moorhangen, where the German army had a hilltop base, which had an unobstructed oh, view no. for miles and miles. And the French, over 40,000 strong in their beautiful, blue and red uniforms marched straight across open fields towards it and the germans just mowed down the french army column killing oh thousands upon thousands and taking twenty thousand prisoners how did the french not just mutiny after that like i would i <laughs> i could understand seeing thousands like just a mass a mass route across the French army just once word got out that that had happened and if their generals were still leading him to them into battle like that, I, uh, ah, the French got the lucky. The French were forced to retreat all the way back into France, 25 kilometers within their own borders. The next day, the French mounted another offensive in the forest of the Ardennes and French commander in chief, Joseph Joffre, who during these early days of the war often seemed like dictator of France, uh -oh. had it all figured out. Joffre, wildly popular in France and later known as Papa Joffre, had at this point never commanded an army before, nor ever worked with a general army staff. And he's leading the French war effort? Huh? Now, he had seen how strong the German left was the day before, and he knew how strong the right was in Belgium, so he figured the center was weak. He figured wrong. On the 22nd, the French attacked at Virton, just inside Belgium, in a heavy fog. And when the fog suddenly cleared, the French found themselves completely exposed to German hilltop gunners. And before you even try to guess what happened next, here's a little piece of information. French field regulations stated at the time that an assault could move 50 meters in 20 seconds before an enemy would have time to reload. These regulations oh no. totally omitted the existence of machine guns. Verton was a catastrophe, France. and the French panicked and broke. At how did this not have an even... Oh my... How... What the series is also telling me, teaching me, is that the French got exceptionally fucking lucky in not having a complete route here and mutiny. What the fuck? La Fontaine, the French lost a third of their forces. At Rossignol, it was worse, as the French forces were trapped on a narrow road by German troops who were already well deployed among the trees, and the French were, again, just mowed down. And even the main French army further west was forced to retreat from Charleroi to avoid being entirely surrounded. On one single day, August 22, 1914, the French lost 
27,000 killed, as well as those wounded, missing, and captured. This was the single greatest loss one nation would have in one single day during World War I. In fact, by the end of August, France had lost 75,000 soldiers killed in the war and another 200,000 wounded or prisoners. Now, France never fully recovered from this, but it's remarkable that she even recovered at all. That's what I'm saying, uh, Hindi. And was able to continue to fight. Now, the German army's problem wasn't so much one of being out of time as it was being out of touch. It was a belief that if an officer had been properly trained, then he would just know what to do in battle and could act independently of his orders. This independence mm. would come back to haunt the Germans. And we saw it in play big style this week as the Germans launched their first major offensive on the Eastern Front. The German high command, mainly Army Chief of Staff von Moltke, had given orders to the army in the east that they were not to make any attacks at all on the Russians until France had been defeated in the West. But the German general Francois in the field, seeing an opportunity, had disregarded these orders and attacked on August 17th, inflicting thousands of casualties and taking 3,000 Russian prisoners. The ironically named Francois was actually born in Luxembourg, but his mm. father had been a Prussian general, and Francois was loath to give up any Prussian territory, being famously quoted as saying, General Francois will withdraw when he has defeated the Russians. Francois believed that even though the Russians had the numbers, the German advantage in weapons and equipment meant that they should attack the Russians now. And he convinced his superior, von Prittwitz, to also go against orders. That is totally a German. Let's just look at that face. I don't have a mustache. And on August 20th, the Germans attacked at the Battle of Gumbinen. The German attack against the Russians proved to be a failure, and Francois Rip. and the Germans were forced to retreat, thousands of them killed by the Russian gun. The Krieg in Austin, Gumbinen, held in Friedhof? For any German watching, I am sorry for that. Butchered pronunciation. Leaving some 6,000 <clears throat> German prisoners in Russian hands. Now, Moltke and Pritwitz no, panicked they got bread, after it looks this like. defeat and worried that Berlin might even be threatened by the Russian army. So Pritwitz retreated more than 150 kilometers, leaving East Prussia entirely to the Russians. And Moltke transferred several divisions from the French front over to the Russian front. However, if we look back over at the French front, the German army there was, as we've talked about before, implementing the Schlieffen Plan, by which they would sweep down through Belgium and northern France, bypassing the heavily defended Franco-German border, and ideally defeat the French within six weeks, so the whole German army could then turn its attention towards Russia. So Moltke taking troops away from France to use against Russia might not have been his best idea. But the Schlieffen Plan seemed to be going well. On August 20th, German troops... Yeah, I can't really blame Moltke too much here for this. Um, I mean... Yeah, you know, I'm not gonna blame... <laughs> not, you know, with... I mean, the quality of German, edu uh, German military education at this time, as, as I've said in the previous video, the German army of World War One is... Easily one of the greatest military forces in all of human history. I place it in the top five. They were able to fight Russia, France, and Britain all at the same time. While also still sending troops to help the Austro-Hungarians along their borders. Various spots. Like. That's just insane. How well they were able to perform. So. I am not going to uh, be like, oh, Moltke was wrong. I think Moltke probably, I would say, you know, if I were put in the same situation as Moltke, I probably would have made the same move. Because what you're seeing here is you are seeing pretty much a, nearly a complete rout of the French forces. Yeah, they're still putting up a fight, but you're beating them everywhere. You are slaughtering the French when you fight them. The Germans are just absolutely decimating the, the French here in, the, in this early fighting and so it's like from that point of view i think it makes total sense for moltke to be like all right we can take some divisions here and send them out east to help try and contain the russians right 
troops entered Brussels, Makes sense. the first European capital occupied by a foreign army since Paris in 1870. But to really see generals being both stuck in the past and acting independently of orders, we have to turn our attention to the Balkans. By the middle of Yay, August, the, the Balkans. Austrian arms. Nothing goes wrong in the Balkans. Eh. was firmly established on the eastern shore of the Drina River and began advancing into Serbia. Now, the Austrians soon learned the hard way that the Serbian army knew its business. And the uh -oh. Austrian army was hopelessly out of date. See, the Serbs used things like hand grenades, which scared the crap out of the Austrians grenades. who had never seen them before. And Austrian general Oskar Potiorek had no interest in things like artillery ballistics and modern mountain guns. And to him, infantry artillery coordination didn't exist. Yeah. Huh. Did he not study Napoleon at all and what part of the reason why Napoleon was so successful was infantry and artillery coordination? Motherfucker. <laughs> Potiorek had actually been in the car with Franz Ferdinand the day the Archduke was assassinated, oh. and it was he who had botched security that day. And like many of the other military leaders at this point in the war, he was a career officer who had never seen a day of battle. Why did this man still have a job if he was in charge of the security? I, f I feel like he should have been fired. He was in charge of security, and, and the man he was, you know supposed to protect died. I feel like he should have been fired. On August 15th, the what Austrian the army assaulted Mount Kerr, a defended plateau about 30 kilometers east of the Drina. Now, it was tough climbing for the Austrians, so they had to leave their artillery behind. In the evening, in heavy rain, they reached the plateau. At 1 a.m., the Serbian troops closed in, opening fire on the sleeping and disorganized Austrians. And in just the time it took for the Austrian army to rally, most of its officers were killed. Hand-to-hand mm. -hand combat lasted till the dawn. Ooh. And with the dawn came Serbian reinforcements and artillery, and they forced the Austrian army to withdraw. On the 20th of August, the survivors of Mount Kerr retreated all the way back to Bosnia, having suffered nearly 28,000 casualties in the battle and its aftermath. By the evening of August 24th, no Austrians remained in Serbia except 4,500 prisoners of war. So at the end of the week, Germany was advancing in the west and retreating in the east. But what we see most of all is a generation of Frenchmen being killed and maimed because their high command was in a Napoleonic fantasy. And the great Austro-Hungarian Empire, with its incompetent officers, outdated equipment, and outdated ideas, had been humiliated by a tiny Balkan nation. Mm. Over the next yeah. four years, warfare would basically move from 1870 to 1940. Death would come to soldiers in never before imagined ways. From the skies, on the seas, under the seas, above the ground, on the ground, and even below the ground. The mindsets of the men leading these soldiers to their deaths changed only slowly though. And before they caught up with modern tactics and technology, 10 million young men would die. We'll see you next week. Click subscribe to- Well, that was a positive end. Oh, really? World War One? No real positive. No positive endings whatsoever. Well, that was week four of the Great War. A new war with old generals carnage on the Western Front. I said all that I needed to say throughout the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.